Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North East Lincolnshire series, centred around Grimsby and Cleethorpes along the Humber Estuary. North East Lincolnshire has 21 civil parishes. Here's today's for you. Welcome back again to North East Lincolnshire, folks. Now, I got a pleasant surprise when I pulled up at my parking space for this one, because that building behind me is this village's village hall. Now, on Google Maps, it looks a lot different to what it is now. I wonder whether it's been replaced or maybe refurbished or something. We'll soon find out. Welcome to Brigsley. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Brigsley, a small village located between Waltham and the A18 in North East Lincolnshire. In much the same way as many other villages locally, Brixley is a pleasant little settlement. It comprises three main roads and a host of small residential cul-de-sacs. The parish boundaries also extend north to the southern outskirts of Waltham, covering an area known as Norman Corner. Brixley's name is quite an easy one to understand, especially if you've already followed me around North Lincolnshire. Brig literally means bridge, whilst Lee means a wooded clearing. You don't have to be a genius then to work out that it was the bridge in the wooded clearing. It's likely that the bridge in question would have been over Waithe Beck, although it's unlikely to mean the current bridge. Waithe Beck forms the parish boundary with Ashby cum Fenby, skirting the edge of the village, passing over a weir before it heads out into East Lindsay. Brixley doesn't have much in the way of features. That said, it does have a Norman church, made mostly of chalkstone, a well used village hall that's recently celebrated its 50th anniversary, and a picturesque little village green. The most iconic building in Brigsley cannot be argued. On Waithe Lane is the Thatch, a 17th century timber-framed thatch cottage, often used as a Brigsley symbol. Oh, and people used to flock here for ice cream too. Let's go and find out why. Our route around Brigsley begins on St Helen's Crescent at the Village Hall, and I was absolutely right, this has been recently refurbished. The hall celebrated its 50th anniversary earlier this year. It's a well-used building, and the village play area is around the back of the hall too. Leaving St Helen's Crescent behind, here's the B1203, the road to Waltham. According to Google, at this bus stop you can catch the number 25, but I'm not sure if this is still in use. If you carry on walking, you eventually come to a sweeping right-hand bend, upon which is a lovely little village green. Lined with daffodils and other spring flowers, the green has a flagpole, which at the time of filming was flying the British flag. I'd have been just as happy to see the Lincolnshire one up there, though. There's also a parish notice board here, so mark it off, folks. With Brigsley down, there's only seven remaining now in North East Lincolnshire. So at this point here, the village green, you've got a choice. You can either go left or you can go right. It doesn't matter which way you go because this is a circular walk and we will be coming back the other way, whichever way I pick. I'm gonna go that way because that will take us towards the church next.
Dedicated to St. Helen, this is Brixley's Grade 2 listed Anglican Church, the imposing stone tower of which stands tall over Church Lane. St. Helen's dates back to the 11th century, although there are later additions. In 1796 it was greatly altered, and in both the 19th and 20th centuries it was restored. It has a Norman tower with an early English nave and chancel. It's built primarily of chalk stone, and there's been considerable rebuilding work on top of what was originally ironstone. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that some of its material would have been quarried locally. Inside, St Helens has an impressive lectern and an organ case from Brocklesby Park, and there's some monuments to Sir William Pelham and his family. It can seat 105 people. In the churchyard is a cross shaft just to the south of the church's tower. Historic England gives no date for this. From my experience though, I'd guess it's from the 14th century. Okay, so at the end of Church Lane, it's a simple right turn and we carry on walking. Now, you know how I said in East Ravendale that you don't see very many thatched cottages in Lincolnshire? Well, it's like London buses, isn't it? You see two in one day after not seeing any for God knows how long. <laughs> There's another one down here. I've spotted it. You won't be able to see it yet. It's just off to the left. The next thing to talk about is the former Primitive Methodist Chapel, which is that building in shot right now. So this is the former Primitive Methodist Chapel. There were in fact two Methodist chapels in Brigsley, one Primitive and one Wesleyan. Both were on Waith Lane. Also on Waith Lane is the Thatch. Often used as a Brigsley symbol, this 17th century cottage is by far the most iconic house in the village. Aside from the church and the cross shaft, it's the only other listed building in Brigsley. It's timber framed with mud and stud infill. There's no house quite like it anywhere else in the village. Waith Lane continues west before eventually running into the B1203 again, which forms a neat little loop. And here is Waith Beck again making another appearance on the channel. It glides under the bridge that separates Brigsley from Ashby cum Fenby. In much the same way as in Hatcliffe, Waith Beck is the parish boundary. Everything you can see across the bridge here belongs to Ashby, including Halliday's Garage. So this road that we're now on is the main road from Brigsley into Waltham, so it is going to be quite busy. Um, hopefully not too busy that you can't hear what I'm saying or what I'm doing. So we're just going to follow this all the way back up to the village green and uh, that'll almost be it. This building is a former shop. What do you think it sold? Was it a newsagent's? A butcher's? A baker's maybe? Nope, none of those. It was an ice cream shop. Stick around until the end, it has a story to tell. Brixley has no other shops or any kind of amenities. The nearest ones are all in Waltham, so ideally living here does require a car to get by. Brixley also has no school, in fact it's never had one. Children here either attend school at Waltham or at East Ravendale. As we travel back up the B1203, the road begins to split into two pieces, a newer section and an older section, which at one time was the road's route. The new route split the village green into two pieces, leaving this little crescent-shaped lay-by behind on the left-hand side. I imagine before this was built, this bend would have been considered quite nasty. Now much shallower and certainly wider, it allows traffic to sail through the village with ease.
and just like that we are back to the village green where we were not very long ago. Now you might think that's it, that's it for Briggsley. Well that's it for the main walk apart from walking back to the car at the village hall but to finish this episode off I need to drive up into Waltham and catch Norman Corner which is a small sort of group of houses slash hamlet right on the border with Waltham. Apart from that though that's been Briggsley. I've no idea how Norman Corner got its name. All the interesting stuff in this area is off this road to the left, including some country cottages and a campsite called Sungrove. Brixley is a popular place for camping and for walkers too, and that brings us back to the ice cream shop. In the mid-1930s, Eliza Leary began selling sandwiches and tea to the many walkers who stopped by the bridge over Wade's Beck. A small shop was soon established which sold ice creams and general goods. The original ice cream machine was capable of making one pint of ice cream every 45 minutes. The Learys continued to make ice cream from goat's milk during World War II. By the mid-1960s, they forgot about selling other stuff and concentrated on ice cream only. The shop became famous and was even known as the famous Briggsley Ice Cream Shop. If only every village had a tale to tell quite like that. Well that's been Briggsley's and that's been the parish of the same name. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.